Hi, I'm Celia Schilling from Yacht Club Games. Hey, this is James from Mega Cat Studios. Hey, this is Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon, from Reignite, Screen Snark, and the Fun and Games podcast. This is Stephanie from the Boss Rush podcast and the Boss Rush Network. Hey, this, this is Mark, Mark and Keon from Bonta Affold. Hey, this is Sebastian with the ProNerdReport.com and the Single Player Experience podcast. Hi, this is Chris. Mike. And Garrett from Daylight Basement Studio. Hey, this is Baron J67 from Level 1 Gaming. Hey, this is Todd Mitchell from Code Right Play. Salutations. This is Mike Carroll from Strollart. Hey, this is Jeff Moonen from Fun and Games Podcast. Hey, this is Patrick from the Backlog Odyssey. Hey, this is Rune from Runic Codes. Hi, this is Andrew from Spalato Bros. Hi, everyone. Jill Grote here from the Indie Informer. Hello, this is the Crypt Master, and you're listening to Roger Reich. Rich here. You're listening to Roger on the Gamer Heads Podcast. And welcome to another episode of the Gamer Heads Podcast. My name is Roger. This week I have a very special guest. I have Benjamin Salkvist. He is the CEO and creative director at Pine Creek Games, the creator of Winterboro. And Benjamin, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule, waking up early. This is really early for you. So I appreciate you taking time and, and meeting with me and talking about the game. I'm, I'm excited to talk about the game. And thank you for having me. It's, uh, I don't mind getting up early. I have small kids, so I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. They're all in bed, much probably like your kids are all in bed right now. So yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, before we talk about Winterboro, though, why don't we talk about yourself? Yeah. Um, tell me more about you. How did you get into gaming? Yeah, how did I get into gaming? That might be a long story. If 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 you if you <laughs> ask me that question, you can edit it out if it becomes too long. <laughs> uh, I want to start back when because that's kind of like irrelevant for the game that I'm working on. But back in high school, yeah. I wanted to study biology because I thought it was super interesting. Biology and wow. uh, and art was kind of like the things I was into. I was able to draw better than my uh, uh, yeah my other friends. Um, nice. And uh, but but then I talked with somebody and I said, if you need to study biology, you have to leave, read all these German uh, things uh, when you go to study at the university. I was like, damn, I don't mm. want to read anymore. Like I already <laughs> read a lot in high school, <laughs> uh, so I was kind of like, yeah, maybe not. And then I went for a couple of, of, of I think, of one year or something, and then and didn't do anything like the, the typical. Uh, High school is kind of like I don't know if it refers to the same in 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 the U- U.S. as in Denmark, but yeah. So so I um, I ended up studying art as an art art teacher for for three years. Okay. Oh, wow! And it was really yeah. <laughs> and and it was super super interesting, super cozy. Uh, uh, but people around me was like, you cannot make a living from art, but you may get a real job, kind of. Like some said it almost <laughs> directly, and some said it more kind of like, like, you know, when they say it without saying it, you, you just know they're yeah. kind of like, so what are you going to do when you are done? <laughs> like, what, what are you really going to study? <laughs> and it's a bit sad that people are kind of like, you cannot live from this, because I really wanted to live from yeah. it. I was uh, thinking about maybe I could live from making toys. I really like toys, and I had these ideas oh, nice. for toys. So I actually actually yeah. sent uh, an, uh, an idea to Lego for these kind of like, oh, really? uh, toys that you could play with out in the garden because I usually play oh, really? with my Legos out in the garden and I, if they had these yeah. big wheels they could drive around in the garden uh, they oh, just wow. sent it back to me and say we don't take in stuff like this I think they were f- <laughs> afraid of copyright something <laughs> like if somebody okay. sent, they said specifically we didn't look at this <laughs> oh wow I think they want to avoid that people sent them stuff and later say I, that's my idea because yeah, yeah they, they get a lot of problems yeah yeah so so um, but then so i uh, then i had a friend who was his mother found this school in copenhagen which is a bit i'm from the southern part of denmark where, where mm. you could study it and you could study something that was related to computer games and i was like i really like computer games and it so that's that's something for me so yeah. i studied there for two 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 two, two or three years 
Uh, mm. So that's kind of like I have the art background. I have the yeah. IT computer background. They, they didn't really yeah. have a computer game kind of like specific kind of like collection of courses. So we have to kind of like pick the right ones. So I did 3D and I did some database programming, which was uh, why I learned why I shouldn't be a programmer. <laughs> like it was crazy. <laughs> you're you're yeah. sitting and they're telling you, this is how you program. You're like, that sounds easy. <laughs> and then you sit with a blank paper and you're like, like, what did they say? Like, it's completely <laughs> gone again. Like, and I have yeah, no yeah. idea where to start. So I was like, okay, I'm not, yeah. I'm not. So now you know, I'm, I, I'm not the programmer in the company. And <laughs> even though people will think that I'm moving into some kind of like, I was the artist. Uh, I have did, done art on some early games, uh, mm. but I think it, it never turned out how it. I imagined it to look like in my head. Uh, and I don't have the patience to sit down and get really good at drawing. It actually takes mm. practice. Uh, so yeah, so I got into gaming through the something called the IT University in Copenhagen that has these different courses, and it was super interesting. A lot of kind of like high level stuff about uh, the, the social interactions, and uh, mm. so it was actually super interesting because they it wasn't just learning how to make a game; it was also how games is a part of our society. So yeah, I did that. And then uh, after that, uh, me and a friend, uh, which I knew from high school, who also studied at the IT University, that was his mother who got us into the IT University. <laughs> uh, he, We were talking and he was like, I don't know which of us got the idea, but we were kind of like, let's let's start a company and, and see if we can mm. kind of like make uh, our own games. Because the other, other option was to kind of like apply for a job in the Danish game industry. And at that yeah. time, it was uh, it was before the iPhone. It was in two thousand and seven, mm. so it was mm. there was no smartphones. There was it was just flash games on the web, and it was yeah. Hitman in Denmark, <laughs> like big IO yeah. interactive, and yeah. So that's how I got into gaming. So we had the company for ten wow. years, making a lot of small games, games for yeah. the Danish Broadcast Corporation. Like they had this kids channel so they wanted some kids games on their platform really yeah. so i made a lot of oh, uh, kids wow. games super fun super kind of like small condensed game ideas uh, and then i did a lot of um, educational games games from museums and uh, stuff like that mostly because you could get some cultural funding to make those games so that's kind of like yeah, running around yeah. trying to find money for games like it's in a small yeah. country like denmark there's when you make games as for other people, is there's not really many people out there. But I always yeah. had this dream about making my own games. And that's kind of like what, what I'm doing now with the, with Pine Creek Games. That that's that dream of making games that is bigger and, and, and not uh, made for somebody else who, who have a specific purpose, but where you imagine something that could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I love that. And it's interesting. Uh, we'll talk after the recording because uh, I think a lot of our paths actually are very similar. Yeah. So we'll have to talk about that some more. Um, but so this is your first uh, full game that's outside of the, the education system then. Is that is that right? Yeah, where I'm uh, uh, closing in on, on finishing it. I, ha- I had one yeah. company in the middle between my first company and Pine Creek Games, mm. where I was working on a and a small kind of like aeroplane game, uh, where you fly in a small red aeroplane. It was called Above, mm. uh, but it never made it. Uh, it never got finished. We ran out of funding. Uh, the classical mm. over scoping, kind of like don't yeah. didn't figure out how to have the right focus for the game because we had such a long development span. So the game changed a lot every time we picked it up mm. and like, then we got some funding and we look at it and we're like now we can reimagine it and we just made it a new game <laughs> so we yeah, never really yeah. finished it uh well i read i read actually an article that you wrote about uh your experience working on that game and, yeah. and how it got bigger and bigger and that the fact that you then went to Winterboro and, and you said, I, I have to yeah. like make sure that doesn't get too big. Yeah. Like what were some of the lessons you learned then through that experience and yeah. how did you apply them to Winterboro? It was especially scope. Like when you work with games and I think with, when you work probably with anything, but for me, it's, it's I have the experience from working with games. 
uh, you always kind of like get these ideas of, oh it would also be super nice to have this feature would it be nice if the character could do this like in above we had this um, in the beginning you couldn't you couldn't get out of the airplane so you landed on an island and you can click the buildings to talk with people and some point like mm. wouldn't it be nice if you could get out of the airplane and walk around on the islands <laughs> and uh, uh, the people I was working with at that time was like, yeah, but I mean, that's cool, but it's also a lot of work. But yeah, but it would be really nice. And I, I, they, they let me. And that's, they shouldn't have, I don't know. Um, so it's stuff like that. Stuff that is kind of like, yeah, yeah it would be nice. But if we, we, if we haven't done it, people would just have accepted, okay, this is a game where you land and then you click the mm. buildings to talk. Like it would have been a more simple game, more better scope. Mm. So, so stuff like that happens. And then you get, you, you hire people and they have ideas and, it, and it, that's super amazing because I think everybody who's working on projects should have a say, should have some kind of like put their their imprint on the game. But it's yeah. also a balance where you really have to figure out when does it when does it expand on what you have, or when does it make a, a different game or a bigger game. And 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 with above we were at least two games in one because there was so many things it was 3d and stuff like that so that's what's one of the mm. things i learned the other thing was when you are uh, inventing the game it was a it was i, I called it a, a miniature flight simulator or something like mm. there was just having the airplane as the main part like it was the main vehicle it was you upgraded that one so it there was just a lot of gameplay around that that where we didn't really have any super close references. So we had to figure out, okay, what is fun to do with an airplane? How much gameplay should we have mm. with the airplane? And we had tried to do different things with the airplane, like dropping things. But then the, I was really keen on having this from the outside camera angle. So it looks really, so mm. the plane looked really small. So we felt kind of like yeah. vulnerable to everything in the world. But that just made it super difficult to make any kind of gameplay with it. So it's kind of like you have to mm. also figure out if you, make certain choices it also affects the possibilities you have so yeah. we just stumbled around in that like didn't like, I, w I was at some point to to stop on on stuff like i want this to be like that <laughs> but i just had this clear <laughs> vision of it but then i should have yeah. been better either to let go of that or don't have the other thing mm. that's a long mm. story you can hear that uh, but to cut it short uh, when you are inventing stuff in a game, like if your game is, is very original and not really done before, you don't have any references, it takes a long time to figure it out because you just have to do trial and error. So I also yeah. promised myself to next time I made a game to make it smaller, <laughs> smaller, keep the scope. Yeah. I'm still work hard, <laughs> fighting hard to, to keep the scope <laughs> on, on, on Winterboro, but to make yeah. it in a, a genre that I knew at that that was well defined and so i picked this survival mm. genre because i had just put so many hours into survival games at that time so i was kind of like i'll make a survival game and i was playing <laughs> it will it will probably <laughs> surprise a lot of people that winterboro is inspired by seven days to die like a zombie yeah. survival game yeah but i was yeah i was playing that a lot and i was imagining what if i was this was woodland creatures running around like <laughs> uh, because you can dig down in the ground anywhere it's kind of like minecraft mm. inspired so mm. i was thinking oh that could be the moles they're good at digging down and mining stuff and then the squirrels is good at crawling up in the trees and, and they can have tree houses up there in safety yeah. from the the zombies and that but I, I like <laughs> Seven Days to Die is a very big game. It's it's you don't sit down and make Seven Days to Die unless you have I don't know a lot of millions. <laughs> so I was like I, I won't get that much money. Uh, yeah. So I pretty quickly made it into a two D game, and I thought making it isometric would give you some ability to make big worlds and make them feel like you're moving around like side view is kind of like you can go right or left uh, and that's oh, up and down maybe but but yeah. Yeah. so that's um, um that's how i ended up in, in winterboro wow i so it's interesting to me because i did read that article where you where you, you talked about the development and where you got you know where, where you come from and where you're going and one of the things that you said and you just said this here too was the fact that uh you know you you wanted to make sure that 
you're not reinventing something or you're not inventing something. <laughs> and, but, but, but if I think of winter barrel, like it, 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 maybe I should start with, you know, you telling me what winter yeah, barrel is, but, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, it's combining two genres. So can you tell us about winter barrel? What, what is winter barrel? Cause like you, yeah. it's built as a cozy survival game. Can you describe what that, what that yeah. is? Yeah. It's a cozy woodland survival game uh, with, with elements uh, like with crafting and then elements of uh, life sim and, and RPG. Um, mm. Winterboro is, is um, the tension field bef- between the, the uh, cozy, safe home and the uh, mm. hostile or at least uncomfortable outside. It's mm. it's basically when when you sit with a warm blanket and are drinking your tea and it's raining outside or there's a snowstorm, it's much more cozy to be under that blanket than if it was sunshine outside. So it's something about yeah. what happens in, when you have contrast. I love contrast in anything. Mm. Like there should be some some things that kind of like fight each other, and and the safety and danger is fighting each other, and they're also working together like the. When you walk from one to the other, um, so it was actually, it was actually some of the ideas for for Winterboro came from when I was playing Seven Days to Die, and I had mm. to go out get water in a rainy day, and it, my character just needed water, and I was heading out, and it was foggy, I couldn't see anything, and I finally found a small lake, got some water, was heading back to the base, my character was freezing and going this kind of sound like sound like I was like oh. and then suddenly I could see this warm light in the horizon in the fog, like I, mm. and I oh that's my that's my base, and I went there, and the, the light was coming from this forge that was making making iron in guts. And the mm. feeling of coming home and, and getting warm again and being safe again. I was like, this, I really, I like, I, I told a lot of people about, like, I played Seven Days to Die yesterday and I had this experience. And I just felt there's something in, in this experience of coming from a hostile environment into the warmth. Mm. Um, so that's basically what Winterboro is about, this kind of like exploring this, this uh, these two areas together. And it, it, it is difficult. There's a lot of balancing and finding out what is what. F- um, but for me, Winterboro is is um, is a survival game that is not that punishing. It's it's something that that uh, where you can keep building upon what you have, um, uh, but but still have uh, this um, feeling of that there's something dangerous out there, but you don't have to um, uh, face it or engage with it if you don't want to. In the same way as the zombies in Seven Days to Die, I have a hate love relationship to them. Like you're standing <laughs> and doing, like I like I like building in the game. So I'm usually kind of yeah. like building a nice space, and suddenly there's just something behind you that's like, you're like shit. Or you get this shark, <laughs> turn around and start fighting. You have the wrong tool because yeah. you were building, so just hitting them with a hammer, and they're hitting you. And you're like, where's my kind of like my weapons? Um, yeah. But then I, I was kind of like, I'll, I'll turn them off and I just sit in creative mode and build. And it just became boring that there wasn't mm. the something, it's just the knowledge that it can happen. Like, I don't like when it mm. happened. I don't I, like this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's some people who play at night in Seven Days Live where the zombies can run. And I, no, no, thank you. Like, I'm just <laughs> staying in my base, looking down on the ground. Uh, uh, so that's also kind of like, yeah. We are derailing. I think oh, I am. <laughs> no, no, this is perfect. This is perfect um, because because one of the things that you that you mentioned also in in that article is how you wanted to like you wanted to be about a mouse because uh, <laughs> because of the fact that it can burrow and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but but I also think like mice are like as you talked about like a good man hedgehogs and and you actually talk about like your your trips when you were a kid and going yeah. and, and and exploring in the woods yeah. and and how much you enjoyed that yeah. um but i feel like the mouse is like like the most vulnerable of all the little woodland creatures out there right yeah. because anything can come swoop down and, and get them at any moment um yeah, can you talk a little bit about why you chose uh you know the mouse as a protagonist and and in in your experience uh and how it played into your experience as a as a, as a kid and exploring and how it played into this game as well yeah yeah, that's actually a lot of things in there. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, t- 
take the mouse first. The the, yeah. the mouse is actually a birch mouse. The birch mouse is an endangered species in Denmark because mm. there's not mm. that many habitats left for it. Uh, we also have another endangered mouse, the hazel mouse. But that was so like it's so cute, the hazel mouse. I thought it people wouldn't believe that it's a real mouse. So I went with the, the birch <laughs> mouse, uh, which is also super cute. So, so mm. there's no habitats for it because in, in Denmark is a small country, so we take up a lot of room, and a lot of that room has mm. been made into like a lot of the forest has been turned into farming areas. Um, mm. um, so we really need to 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 get some more uh, plant some more wood and get some habitats for these animals. So that's kind of like a, 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 a hidden agenda for me. I, I have mm. a very strong. Um, love for nature and I want to preserve it and re- rebuild what we have lost um, we also have a lot of industries and, and also the farming industry is is uh, destroying basically our nature not only removing it but but poisoning it with uh, like uh, too much uh, fertilizer and, and, and poison mm. to, to keep rodents or anything away so so we just have like in Denmark the our fish life in the lakes and rivers and ocean is just kind of like dying it's just dying and then yeah. they have had like yeah. the farmers have had, had 10 years to do something about it and they, they, they just made it worse during that time that's another story so <laughs> going back to to all the love for nature uh, i remember a specific experience where there was this uh, place my mother used to take me and my uh, siblings usually it was just me and my sister so we went on bikes to this uh, place and there was this hill called fox hill uh, that's uh, at least how i remember it um, and we were playing there and there was also an old oak close to and there was this meadow with a, a small kind of like not a river a creek mm. very small one and we were playing there and i remember just sitting on the on the ground and and, and picking up sticks and leaves and small kind of like um uh, beach nuts and stuff like that and just playing with that and and imagining uh, living in in the on the forest floor and i think yeah. all, all already like all um, even now when i walk around in the forest and I, 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 I now i have kids so i can just sit and play with them uh, and don't look weird but i'm a grown man who's i think i'm 46 <laughs> now or something and i could like if i was alone i, I would sit down and I, I wouldn't mind sit down and play <laughs> the forest floor because i still have yeah. that in me and i think a part of growing old is or growing being a becoming an adult a lot of people think that they have to unlearn to play and to be childish and to be Mm. Because it's it's one it's a vulnerable situation to sit and daydream and play, and people are kind of like making themselves hard and like I I don't imagine anything anymore. It's just kind of like work and and I think that's um, that's uh, it's a bit sad. So yeah, I, I try to tap into that still. Like when I walk in nature and I see a, something that looks like a small hole or something, and like who is living there and what what does their life look like? So so that's um, that's. Uh, Partly why, like Pine Creek Games, will be a company that works a lot with games inspired by nature because there's just so many interesting things there. Um, um, I had one other thing, but I f- forgot it in regards to uh, mice and nature. Um, well, I'm I'm also 47, and I and I play. Uh, I play a lot, but I also have kids too. But I, I also am in a world where I'm creating new worlds all the time. But and I think I think that's I think you're right. I think that's like frowned upon in our society, but it's too bad because I feel like yeah. to have empathy, you have to be creative. And you can't have empathy unless you're a creative person. And I and I wish that more people would tap into their creativity side. So um but that's another chat yeah. for another time. <laughs> we'll take another day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I do have a question that I don't have on the list, and I'm going to ask you here. Um, what was it like to have Winterboro featured in the Xbox showcase? <laughs> showcase? That must have been pretty special. It was. Uh, I never th- really dared to believe that it would happen until it was on the screen because I just had mm. this idea, like, they'll throw us out because we do something wrong. And there's, I... I, I had to deliver a lot of uh, assets and the revisions of the video and and uh, uh, age ratings in the beginning and in slates and we were like i had a lot of help from other people <laughs> but it was mm. yeah 
So I was just kind of like, we, we will not be there. And then I sat down with my family and started watching it. And I was like, all these games, like how will they make me fit in there? Like I, I, I knew the trailer, so I knew it doesn't look like any of this. And it just progressed and then suddenly it was just there. And uh, I, yeah, it was crazy. It, it was it was a big, big experience because I have, even though I've seen the trailer many, many, many times uh, beforehand, it was so special to actually know that now everybody is watching, like the whole world is watching you. Yeah, so that, that was... Um, that was crazy, and it, yeah, I, it, 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 it felt like out of place, like misplaced. The having the trailer <laughs> there between all those yeah. very beautiful 3D games, like Widowmaker is a beautiful game. I can say that because I didn't make the visuals, <laughs> um, but it's, it's still 2D. It's, it, it's, it's a different visual than than, than most games today. So, um, so yeah, it was it was amazing, but also interesting to to see it between all the others. Yeah, I, but you know, it's funny they because it is a beautiful game. I mean, it is absolutely stunning. And thank you. Uh, I will say this: I don't remember many of the other games from that Xbox showcase. <laughs> I do remember Winter Burl, yeah, that's though, good. So like, so and when I when I saw that this was an opportunity to have you on the show, I jumped at it because yeah, I, I th- it looks stunning and it and it's. I'm excited for this game. So uh, that's amazing to hear. Uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so we talked about what games have influenced you yeah. uh, on this, but one thing I, I do have to ask is: so cozy and survival games aren't typically two things that you put in the same sentence. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what 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 does a co- cozy survival game look like? How do you how and can you elaborate on that creative process and the challenges that were involved in trying to merge these seemingly two contrasting genres together? Yeah. Yeah, I think genre may see they are very different, but but um, but uh, the the whole main theme of, of of safety versus danger, like the the meaning of those, actually makes them at least for me make sense. So it's it's always for me to find a balance between that that you have somewhere where you feel safe. So we had a lot of kind of like how. How do we feel safe? So we kind of like made a rule that we cannot destroy the burrow. We cannot have a tree fall into the burrow and you have to mm. fix it before you freeze to death or something. So we have, have these kind of rules that, that there's, there's no, no su- surprise death. We, we always tell you when you're in danger. So we try to have these areas that these areas are fairly safe. And then when you mm. are moving into something where you will meet a, 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 a creature that might pose some danger we will kind of like show it or tell you it's still something that we're working on but having this kind of like and always have a way that you can get out so so some games have this kind of like uh, arena feature where you get into some place and a door closes and you're like you have to uh, battle all these spawning enemies uh, uh, so it, it, you get very aware of the that this is a game because now we are in gameplay mode like there's spawning <laughs> stuff out of nowhere and, and when one is dead and you think now I'm done we spawn more and I, I don't understand yeah. the, those kinds of games but but I don't <laughs> I don't like it to be uh, not be able to run away because that would be what would be possible in the real worlds i want this kind of like sense of reality where you can mm. run away so so you could always get out of combat in our game uh, and it's not really mm. combat based it's more like that there's hostile creatures like a, a game that 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 a lot of people mention in relationship to winterboro is don't starve uh, yeah. so I, I usually say something like it's a game that's somewhere between don't starve and uh, animal crossing <laughs> uh, so so yeah there is a part of of um, of both but but for me it it's it, it's 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 about the balancing and and how we communicate to to the player um and then the coaching is just i don't know it's even though for some survival players they will probably want to look more into weapons and stuff like uh, uh, i just feel that that looking into yeah, knitting sweaters it's, it, it, it creates an interesting contrast that you're out yeah. fighting these big beetles uh, like the insect wildlife of, of Winterboro is, is a bit more hostile than the real world like in reality uh, birch mouse is not uh, don't have any insect or, or, or 
or Spindler or any enemies of that size, but we just made them twice as big and made them a bit aggressive, and now they are dangerous. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I think I think I read in your in your article too how you talked about how you found that a lot of people that play games that are survival games actually enjoy them not being so difficult, like yeah. in not so like like. But but on the flip side, you also talk about how in Animal Crossing you wanted to have a little bit more meat in the or I guess more stake in the game yeah. than just like be able to just survive like there should be more to it and and i think that's an interesting balance there like you're you're leaning into the the animal crossing piece but then also leaning into the like the don't starve yeah. right but like finding that middle <laughs> that middle ground i think that that's an interesting balance that that you must have to do there yeah yeah it is uh, i really appreciate don't starve for what it is like i love playing it yeah. uh, we played it at the company for a few weeks ago and we had a lot of fun you to get to know people in a different way because some people is just <laughs> saving all the others and some people are just running out into the wilderness and, and uh, <laughs> need help. <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a fun game because it's just so so chaotic usually until you, you learn it, but there's always surprises in there. Um, but I, I looked a lot, uh, I did a lot of research on survival games and, and, and what I, uh, mm. some of it was actually just to look at Steam, the Steam reviews, and just instead of taking the good ones, taking the bad ones and see, okay, what, mm. did, what did the people like and what didn't they like? Uh, and then taking, I, I made just a, a, a list of the words that was used, so I had this kind of like... Uh, like uh, grinding was mentioned mm. six times or eight times, and this was mentioned one time. So I had, had this idea of what what me, what people liked and didn't like, and it, it resonated mm. a lot with what I my own feeling for some survival games. That is the the punishing one. That it's you 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 lose progress, and usually it's you die in a way that you didn't anticipate. Like you were just doing stuff, and then suddenly some creature kind <laughs> of come running, and you die. And and yeah. some people like that because they want to kind of like have, have that action, also understand that kind of game. But I, I was starting to long for a game where I could build upon my progress, where I had this kind of like a chance of, of choosing what I wanted to do. If I wanted to mm. stay at home or, or just walk around and, and collecting resources in a safe area and then go build something, or if I wanted to to um, to go out and explore. There's a lot of exploring in, 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 in Winterboro, but there's also a lot of, you can also spend a lot of time uh, expanding your burrow or decorating it or just uh, getting the right equipment. Like it is a survival game, so it's a lot of just uh, getting, yeah, uh, preparing yourself for, for the trip to the outside. Mm-hmm. How, how do you... This is another question that I just thought of when you when you're describing that though. How do you how do you make it though that you? It sounds like very much where a player can kind of decide if they want to pl- lean into the cozy side or lean into the survival yeah. side. But how how do you push a narrative with that though? Then like how do you make sure that certain elements of the story is being told, uh, even though the player has control of like how they want to play that game? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if we solved it. Um... We have, in the beginning of the game, it's a bit more linear just to help people get to know the game. Uh, but from now on, the, the game will open up and, and, and be more free. So one of the things that I've done with the story is that it's very focused on the NPCs. There's a few NPCs, and each of them have mm. is kind of like an island of a story. They have a, their own story that you unfold, mm. but that story tells a bit about the world around you slowly. Um, but it could be they can be experienced in any um, in any order. So you can like you can meet NPC three before you meet NPC two, or you can meet NPC four before you meet NPC three. So it's it's, it's mm. at some point it doesn't really matter who you meet first. They just tell you their story. So it's it gets it will still be experienced linear, but but it's not uh, it's not forced to be linear. And then it's a very mm. simple overarching story that we're trying to make. So don't have too much kind of like conspiracies conspiracies and stuff like that um but it's still something that we're working on like we we focus a lot on the gameplay elements and figuring out how do we find the balance between what you do at the bureau and what you do outside and both things can mm-hmm. be interesting but both also need to 
they shouldn't expand too much again talking about scope like you we have a lot of ideas for what you can do outside and inside and if we yeah. just try to choose the kind of like a few basic ones and then expand those so we get an, a feeling of how the game plays in itself and that's basically mm. where we are now where we have the almost have the balance but we are putting in content to to get an idea of how is it to play through it for a longer period of time and and mm. and then adding the story on the way because you can sit and write a lot of story and, and if you don't know what the game is how it progresses um, it's difficult to make make it uh, fit in the right way you just sit and, and try to make stuff uh, um, fit in in something that might not end up being what you imagine so so in games uh, i learned that it's a good idea to start putting stuff in there because you can write pretty quickly like if you have an idea of where you're mm. going you need some story to make the you need some story about the setting and and what where are we what happened how 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 is the culture how uh, what, what does the npcs look like how do they act uh, to to get yeah. started on working on the game but when you have that put down you can you can actually do a lot of work on the game without writing any more story until you have a bit more of an idea of where you're going and then you can start mm. writing more i would say more detailed uh, stories mm. and, and i suppose i mean similar to animal crossing uh i think probably some of this is the story unfolding from the perspective of the player and like really their their engagement with the game and their experience with the game is, is actually probably tied into that narrative as well yeah, we say that that you kind of like um, can at least make your your own choices uh, some way through it. Um, yeah. But yeah, the, the, the uh, yeah, and then as as I mentioned, the NPCs will have their own take on that. But how you react on on what they they say is is, is up to, to a certain degree. It, it's not a a game with a lot of different narrative endings or anything like it's. Uh, it's, it's, um, we actually try to make the main character very not shallow that was the wrong word but kind of like a shell that isn't very well defined it's, it's not a game where, mm. where you get to learn the main character who, who, who am I playing it's, uh, it's, it's mm. more the main character we try to make them as as anonymous as possible for everybody just to sit down and start playing and, and, and have a feeling that I'm I'm that mouse that's me like yeah, uh, yeah. Um, and it's, it's actually pretty difficult to at some uh, areas to, to make make it that but we try to make your the way you reply on conversations very simple so mm. I don't know if you I, th- I think it's called uh, Cam- Camus wrote a book called The Fall where mm. the main where some of the characters in the book talks to you as if you were there like they break the okay. fourth wall <laughs> uh, mm. and I think that's what's that was one of the things that, that that book is known for and I just when I read it I was kind of like intrigued like can you do that is, are you allowed to kind of like talk <laughs> to the reader like uh, but they talk to you as if they just you know the people who just keep talking like I'm doing now <laughs> that that even though they ask you a question they just keep talking <laughs> because and the characters the NPCs of Winterborough are, are almost doing that they're kind of like asking a question mm. but they don't really want the answer they're just kind of like mm. oh, we just imagine that you answer something inside your head and they are mm. already talking about something else so we try to make this kind of like where they when you get a feeling that you are replying but you're actually not mm. really saying anything at least not in in, in in the game mode but we hope that yeah. those replies will happen inside the head of players where they're sitting there that they imagine what will i will i say but that will leave more space than if you have three choices that is formally in a specific way some people will be like yeah. where's option four because that was actually what i would be saying so we're trying to leave <laughs> like having no options or at least you th- there's mm. some places where we need to say yes or no to something like will you bring me some food because i'm hungry that needs some yeah, kind of reply yeah. but, but besides of that yeah but yeah as i said it's still something we're trying to shape because it when you have more of the game it's also easier for you to figure out kind of like what makes sense and what doesn't make sense so yeah hmm that's so fascinating. I, I, yeah, that's, that is, I love that. Um, what are some of the f- unique features or gameplay mechanics in Winterboro that sets it apart from maybe other cozy games or other survival games? Yeah, that's, that's a good question. I don't know if we have anything special. We have knitting. Knitting is, uh, yeah, is yeah. A, I think, an overlooked. <laughs> <laughs> it's not really, uh... I don't think I've ever played a game where I was knitting, <laughs> no. either in a cozy game or a survival game. So. 
it's basically just crafting with a <laughs> with a <laughs> with a different theme. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we have any mechanics. We probably have, but I cannot kind of like come up with them uh, right now. I think it's the balance between those two different genres that is probably making us stand out to to, to other yeah. games. Um, but there probably is also something that is that is, is that we are I- inventing. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't know what it is. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll have to come back to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, so the game when when are you planning for this release to come? Is it coming out this year yet? Early t- uh, two thousand twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it's coming to Xbox Game Pass for sure. Yeah. Uh, and probably Steam as well. Yeah. Uh, is that right? Yeah. Um, how can people follow you on social media and follow the progress of the game as well? If they look for Pine Creek Games, uh, they can find uh, we are on uh, most social channels. The game has a Steam page and we have a Discord uh, so, so uh, if if you search for Winterboro or, or Pine Creek Games, you will probably find some place that will lead you to, to us, or, or, or PineCreekGames.com will also lead you to to some of the main channels, the Discord. Uh, the Discord will uh, be the, probably where we post most of the more interesting stuff and more he- heavy stuff, where we spend a lot more time to explaining and talking about stuff. Uh, and then on the other channels, it will be pretty. Uh, probably a higher frequency but but less deep so it's we'll we'll see how how we, we, we really like to to share and talk about the game but right now we have been quite busy just getting up and running <laughs> yeah. like it's, it's it has been a real wild announcement it's so great just to be able to talk about it it has been kind of like secrecy in the beginning you don't <laughs> mind because you don't know what you're doing but then at some point when you yeah. actually figure it out you're kind of like why then it becomes you just want to tell people also to see a reaction yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah it's funny it's funny they say that because i get that a lot actually from a lot of people when i interview them <laughs> they're like it's so nice to be able to talk about this yeah. game because for the longest time i couldn't talk about this yeah. game and now i can talk about it and it's so nice <laughs> to be able to talk about it so uh it was really fun having you on the show benjamin thank you so much for joining me thank and, you for having uh, me yeah absolutely listeners i'm going to put the links uh that benjamin mentioned in our show notes so you you can go wishlist the game absolutely uh make sure to follow pinecrest uh games as well or pine creek games it's a nice name uh, as well pinecrest (laughs) that'll be the next company (laughs) uh pine creek games uh and and uh and make sure that you yeah give them a follow make sure you wish wish list the game um benjamin when it gets closer to release, I'd love to have you back on the show. We can talk more love about the game. Too. Yeah, that'd yeah, be great. That'd be great. Um, listeners, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule for giving us a listen. If you like what you hear, leave us a review as well. We want to hear what you have to say about the show. Until next week, everybody, stay safe and game on. Bye. <laughs>